Walls blown out, debris littering the lawn of this dorm after a huge explosion on the campus of Murray State University. You're helping us tell the story through pictures and videos. We're going to share all those with you. We're also live on the scene tonight with team coverage. I'll explain exactly what people believe may have caused this explosion and when crews might actually get inside this building. 10 minutes of nonstop news and your first forecast all before the first commercial. This is 10 at 10. WPSD Local 6, your breaking news and weather authority. This is Local 6 at 10 in high definition. An explosion shakes the Murray State University campus and even homes miles away. And um, it just like went boom. It was like it shook and we could hear it. Kentucky State Police say that explosion happened in New Richmond Hall just before five this evening. This is Facebook video from Taylor Black. He lives in Murray. We know two people were injured and we just learned about an hour ago. 26 year old Dakota Fields has flown to Vanderbilt Medical Center in Nashville. He is a Murray State employee. We don't know the identity of the second person, but they were treated on scene and released. My co-anchor Todd Faulkner is live on campus tonight. And Todd, you've got details on a possible cause, correct? Possible, the key word here, Jennifer, it's still not clear exactly what caused the explosion. That from Kentucky State Police and the Callaway County Emergency Management Director. However, they are both saying that it's possible a gas explosion may be to blame. Tonight outside New Richmond Hall, a lot of this. Take a look broken up pieces of brick sk scatter the entire area. I'm going to step aside and we're going to take a closer look at the damage tonight. This is the closest we've been able to get to the building all evening. Debris, as I mentioned, litters the parking lot next to New Richmond Residence Hall. You can see drywall, plumbing, electrical wiring, all pieces of the building just hanging in the air. We've learned new tonight that structural engineers must inspect the area and actually sign off, give the OK before crews can enter the building. Lots of witnesses and those who live nearby gathered on the campus near the site of the explosion. Some of those people included the Moeller family, Sam, Kelsey, and one-year-old Lucas. And at the time of the explosion, they were outside their home nearby. Sam said in the moment they decided to come and see what they could do, and he described the moment he heard the blast. We were sitting there, and we were playing with him outside, and um, it just, like, went Boom! It was like it shook, and we could hear it uh, virtually. We were just like, you know, thought it was. She thought it was uh, thunder, and we're like, well, there's no clouds in the sky. What is it? You know, and so we were kind of concerned that it might have been something like a, an accident. And if you're just joining us tonight, confirmation that we have learned in the last several hours, several hundred students here for summer school and for the governor's scholarship program. We're told by the university spokesperson that those students living here on campus have been relocated. I specifically asked why be relocated if they weren't in this building, and I was told out of an abundance of caution. Joining me now, Local 6 is Brianna Clark. And Brianna, you've been here at Murray State University near the site over the course of about five hours or so. How has the mood changed in that time? Well, the hustle and bustle has has definitely calmed down. When we first got here several hours ago, this place was surrounded by first responders. The road over there was closed off and you could barely get this close to the scene. And now we are this close to the scene. I walked around and spoke to a few people that live nearby and one local woman says that the explosion was so big that it broke two of her windows. I heard the explosion, it hurt my eardrums real bad for a second and it kind of like, I guess I was put in shock and I just glanced and there was like a big like dust of cloud like smoke all the way covering the soccer field and then my next instant was to run inside and make sure everyone else was okay. Investigators have been out here surveying around the building. They say that they're not going to be able to get in until that it's cleared for them to get in safely. That might not happen until tomorrow morning. And as Todd mentioned earlier, this is the closest that we've been able to get to this building. Uh, police and, and Kentucky State Police say that if it were to come down, that it would come down right by this zoned parking sign. All right, Brianna, thank you. And as she mentioned, uh, members of the media, this is about all you're going to see closest to New Richmond Hall. People are still asked to stay away from the campus. In fact, they've got yellow tape surrounding most of uh, the area here. One more thing about those structural engineers. 
during that news briefing about 45 minutes ago, we were told that they were on their way. Um, I asked where they were coming from. I didn't get a clear answer whether they were from uh, out of town, out of state, or if they were local. But uh, once they get here, then uh, they're going to give the sign off to the crew members. However, lighting is an issue tonight. So the time that crews are actually going to be able to get in that building to take a look and start their specific investigation may not happen until tomorrow morning. Live in Murray, Todd Faulkner, WPSD Local 6. All right, Todd, we'll check it back in with you a little later in the newscast. Of course, all of you out there, the viewers, help us tell this story. Many of you sharing your pictures and your videos from campus with us. This is from our Facebook page, WPSD TV. Chris Smothers sent us that picture you see right there. You can see some people standing a ways back from the building. And uh, of course, you can see the walls are just gone from that. Then Lori Lovins Randolph sent us this picture. Uh, you can see the damage there. There's another picture she sent us saying thick yellow smoke filled with pieces of insulation drifted toward Murray State. Unfortunately, moved away from that. Now we're going to look at some video that she sent us. Uh, again, this is uh, from Lori Lovins Randolph, uh, she said this was sent by her boyfriend who was driving by when that building exploded. You can see a lot of debris in that video. You can check out these pictures on our web channel. Go to WPSDLocal6.com and look for this story. We're following another breaking news story tonight. One person is dead, five others injured in this crash on I-24 in Massac County, Illinois. Investigators say the car drove off the road into the median, then collided with the bridge deck. Three people were flown to a hospital out of state with life threatening injuries. To get breaking news right to your phone, download the WPSD News app and make sure to enable push alerts. Now your weather authority first forecast. Another nice day out there, pretty mild. Yeah, lightening the mood a little bit here. Yes. We did see some nice weather out there, although it turned a little hotter, a little more mm -hmm. humid this afternoon. How about this video on our Baptist House storm pins? You can see from Benton, Kentucky. Oh, Susanna posted this one saying the deer was playing peekaboo for a little while there, probably just being extra cautious yeah. with <laughs> someone in the woods there taking video. But as we advance, you can see the weather overnight tonight is going to stay fairly quiet. We will see a few clouds drifting in from time to time. Temperatures not quite as cool as we've seen in recent mornings. By 5 a.m. we're down to 71 degrees. I will show you when showers will pop up for some of us starting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The rest of us closer to the weekend on your hour by hour forecast in a few minutes. All right, Jen, thanks. We have continuing coverage at 10. Who's to blame for this man's death? His wife, Martha Ligon, pleaded guilty but mentally ill to pulling the trigger. But a lawsuit filed today says the ultimate blame lies with Lourdes Hospital, two doctors and a nurse practitioner. Local 6's Blake Stevens joins us now. And Blake, why are medical professionals and the hospital being sued? Well, Jennifer, attorneys argue they knew something was wrong with her, and instead of treating the problem, they let her go home. Martha Ligon went to Lourdes for a psychotic episode two months before the shootings. When she got there, staff records say Ligon was clearly psychotic. It says she was put in a restraint chair, that she was violent with staff, and Ligon said things like, they killed him and they're going to kill you. Now, one of the doctors in the lawsuit is Dr. Daryl Pal uh, Palladino at Lourdes. He saw Ligon that day and drew up paperwork for her to be involuntarily hospitalized for 60 days. A judge wanted Ligon to be evaluated first. A mental, a mental health professional tried to evaluate her, but the medicine made Ligon too drowsy. The next day, Ligon went home. Attorneys and the state psychiatrist argue these crimes were committed because of untreated psychosis. The day Ligon went to Lourdes in April, the ER staff noted that Ligon was too disruptive there and they wanted her to be at Western State. But a nurse practitioner found Ligon to be okay to go home the next day, the 20th. Now, Dr. Suzanne Yoder signed off on that second evaluation, letting her go home. She is also in the lawsuit. Lawyers are also suing Ligon's primary care provider because evidence shows she knew this problem existed. In fact, two weeks before the shooting, her nurse practitioner, Pamela Diane Green, noted, I am concerned about the safety of both Martha and her husband. And she noted lots of paranoia and saying, said things were getting worse. Now, there was a social worker looking into Martha Ligon's state of mind. He wanted to get a mental health warrant, which would force treatment and take away Ligon's firearms. Attorneys believe if that nurse practitioner or the hospital had informed that caseworker, this tragedy 
could have been avoided. Now, this lawsuit includes Shane Courtney, who got shot in the shoulder after stopping on the road to see if Ligon needed help. Ray Ligon's children are suing Martha Ligon as part of the lawsuit as well. A jury will decide a dollar amount for Martha to pay them. Although she doesn't have any money now, they're seeking any settlement money she might receive in this suit, Jennifer. Well, we did reach out to a spokesperson for Lourdes Hospital. They have no comment at this time. Missing financial records. That's the situation in Franklin County, Illinois. The county board voted unanimously today to hire an audit firm to do a forensic audit after noticing some financial records disappeared from the county circuit clerk's office last spring. The firm will begin their investigation immediately. Board Chairman Randall Crocker says he's hoping the firm will complete the process in a couple of weeks. Robert Lambert will spend 10 years in prison in connection to a deadly stabbing. Lambert pleaded guilty to manslaughter charges for the 2016 death of Jerry Statton. Today in court, Statton's sister talked about how the loss affected her family. Lambert apologized to the family. Timothy Bostick from Mayfield is charged with internet sex crime involving a minor. Detectives with the McCracken County Sheriff's Department say they began investigating Bostick earlier this month by posing as a 14-year-old girl on Facebook. Detectives say Bostick sent an inappropriate picture of himself to undercover investigators and asked for inappropriate pictures in return. Illinois State Police arrested Bostick at a home in Karnak, Illinois, yesterday. The agency in charge of these public housing units in Carroll, Illinois, will lay off employees. A statement from the Alexander County Housing Authority says the agency sent layoff notices to 19 employees today. Now, these cuts come as the Housing Authority struggles financially. A financial assessment done in April found the Housing Authority needs nearly $70 million to replace the Elmwood and McBride apartments. The Housing Authority has about $670,000 available. Tick season is here, and more cases of a deadly illness are popping up in vets offices. Ticks are spreading a deadly disease, commonly called bobcat fever, by biting bobcats, then transmitting it to house cats. Veterinarians say that disease is almost 100% deadly without immediate treatment. Local 6's Logan Gay explains how you can help protect your cat. Anita Powers' cat named Lenny was diagnosed with bobcat fever last summer. She rushed him to the vet after remembering seeing a bobcat in her backyard. Her cat is just one of many that have been affected. Just, it's, it's just unfortunate that a lot, of, a lot of our domestic cats are getting killed by this parasite. Powers took her cat to the Creekside Vet Clinic in Murfreesboro. Dr. Patrice Isley said that over the past several years, the clinic has only been able to save six cats, including Lenny, that suffered from this disease. Up until last year, we had 100% fatality. Some of the symptoms include being withdrawn and change in appetite. Early prevention is the key to survival. It's just very traumatic for a family. You shouldn't have to see your animals suffer that way. Dr. Isley says that she's happy that she can at least offer cat owners hope. So far, their research has shown that the disease is not harmful to humans or dogs. In Carbondale, Illinois, Logan Gay, WPSD, Local 6. The Creekside Veterinary Clinic has been working with a Ph.D. candidate in the SIU Department of Zoology to study bobcat fever. They hope to save more cats' lives. Well, ticks can also bite you. The steps you need to know to treat a tick bite. That's ahead of this week's What's Going Around. And we're tracking that increase in rain showers. The chance as we head closer to the weekend coming up after the break. You're watching Local 6 at 10. Your breaking news and weather authority with Todd Faulkner. Jennifer Horbelt, Weather Authority Jennifer Rukavina, and Jeff Bidwell Sports. You're watching Local 6 at 10 in high definition. WPSD Local 6, the Weather Authority, certified most accurate by weather rate. All is quiet on the home front tonight, but we are tracking some storms to our northwest that are making their way through northern portions of Missouri and Il in Illinois, as well as Iowa tonight. Now, this complex of storms is going to die out overnight tonight, but it's going to spread some clouds our way to the south, though. We're tracking this bit of energy that's working its way up from the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of moisture associated with this and just the very northern fringe of this is actually going to be skirting the local six areas. We head through the day tomorrow and that's going to give us a slight chance for some thunderstorms, mainly across Tennessee and Kentucky. That chance only about 20%, but just to be prepared, you want to take the umbrella just in case for tomorrow afternoon. But things are nice and quiet right now. You can see some of those clouds drifting in 
across the I-64 corridor back into the Ozarks. St. Louis area seeing a lot of that thicker cloud cover and just a few high clouds to paint a beautiful sunset across our area tonight. Right now we've got partly cloudy skies. Temperature still very warm, 76 degrees and a very light wind out of the southwest at 5 miles per hour. Barometer's holding steady at 29.96 inches, but we'll see that slowly go down over the next couple of days as we see our next weather maker head our direction. Overnight tonight will continue with mostly clear to partly cloudy skies, so a few clouds from time to time. That'll be the case throughout the day tomorrow too. 6 a.m. sunshine, temperatures already in the low 70s. It's going to be very warm and humid again tomorrow as temperatures make their way into the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees. We'll also see those rising dew points, which makes for a more humid atmosphere. We'll also give life, lit, life to a few showers and thunderstorms. You can see by 2 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow during the heat of the day. You can see in Kentucky, Tennessee, and now we'll continue pretty much into the evening hours as well. Here's a look at 10 o'clock. Most of that activity is winding down, but we'll still see some lingering clouds from that. But then on Friday, our rain chance goes up to 30%. It may even get bumped up a little higher than that. As we start out in the morning Friday, we'll see some storms to the north, but a little piece of energy swings south into our area starting at 1 o'clock. Storms developing over portions of Missouri and Illinois, and this starts to swing south towards the Ohio River by 5 o'clock in the evening, and then eventually pushing out of the area during the overnight hours. But we're going to see more of this, more so as we go into Friday night and Saturday, with an increased chance for showers and storms as we start the upcoming weekend. Those of you taking a long holiday weekend, maybe four days, uh, to celebrate the 4th of July, you may want to have a plan B for some of those activities that you're planning outdoor. Tomorrow, that 20% chance, high of 90, 88 on Friday, a 30% chance of showers and storms. Saturday, as we get the weekend started, unfortunately, the 60% chance, the peak uh, chance for showers and storms this weekend on Saturday. Then on Sunday, it's down to 30%, so a lot of drier time will make its way into the region by Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, although we can't rule out a few thunderstorms. One thing's for sure, it's going to be a hot 4th of July with temperatures close to 90 degrees. Remove, check, confirm, and monitor. Those are the steps to take if you discover a tick on your loved one. Local 6's Stephanie Martinez has who's seeing tick bites and more in this week's What's Going Around. Dr. Joshua Whitledge from Tenova Primary Care in South Fulton, Tennessee, is taking care of tick bites and gastroenteritis. In Benton, Illinois, Dr. Brian Harrison is also seeing his fair share of tick bites. If a rash or any symptoms develop, it may require treatment. Also common this week, sinus infections. Nurse practitioner Jennifer Brown says people are visiting fast-paced Princeton with rashes developed after a tick bite. Poison ivy rashes, sinus infections, and allergies are other ailments she's treating. Dr. David Saxon at Baptist Health Urgent Care in Paducah is also treating tick bites, along with spider bites and poison ivy. For this week's What's Going Around, I'm Stephanie Martinez. We continue our live team coverage from that explosion at Murray State. More of what's being done to keep the scene safe and when investigators could finally get into the building. We continue our breaking news coverage. Let's return now to my co-anchor Local 6's Todd Faulkner, who is live at Murray State University tonight where there was an explosion earlier tonight. And Todd, obviously still a messy situation out there. Investigators haven't even been able to get into the building. What kind of security is in place out there for the evening? All right, so Jennifer, the security tonight is going to be at a couple of different levels. The state level, Kentucky State Police, as well as the county level. Well, I've also noticed uh, some security with Murray State University. And I've just learned new within the past 10 minutes that agents with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms are on scene here. I'm told because of their expertise in explosives. We talked about the debris from the scene we showed you earlier. I can't go too far because there's still restrictions. But we're going to go in a little bit and I want you to take a look over my shoulder. Look at all all of the brick, the rocks, all of the insides of the building. I see steel, all of it blew out from that building and it landed in the parking lot here behind me. It landed on some cars. I count three cars, no, four cars with debris on it. Those cars are damaged and I'm told they're not going to move those cars until investigators have time and daylight to take a closer look. And some people said they showed up after hearing the explosion just to see if they could help. You said that you kind of wanted to come over here and see what was going on. Right. Why exactly? Well, because when we found out on Facebook that there was an explosion, we wanted to see, you know, if anybody needed help with anything, if we could be assistant uh, to anybody. And we came over here and seen that it was taped off and just for, you know, safety reasons, which is good that the local police department did their job on that. Yeah. And um, we've seen the destruction. 
And again, just to recap, right now, no activity inside this damaged dorm because they're waiting on structural engineers to sign off and give the okay for crews and investigators to actually go in and start their investigation. Live in Murray, Kentucky, Todd Faulkner, WPSD Local 6. All right, Todd, thanks for the update. We're going to continue to follow this developing story overnight on our web channel, WPSDLocal6.com. And of course, tomorrow morning with live reports on Local 6 Today. To get breaking news right to your phone, download the WPSD News app and enable push alerts. Last month, St. Louis Cardinals sent struggling Randall Grichik to the minors to let him work his way out of his slump. Since returning to the bigs, Grichik has shown improvement. Now the team's hoping the same move will help Aledmi's Diaz today, sending him to AAA Memphis. He was an all-star last year. He's been vocal about how he's not comfortable at the plate this season, so he's going to AAA. Without Diaz, Cardinals are going to make a back-to-back, -back, avoid back-to-back -back losses to the Diamondbacks. Yadier Molina, a two-run single, part of a three-run fourth inning. Adam Wainwright has worked out of some jams early. It's 3-1 Cardinals. They lead the D-backs in the fifth. Cubs looking to avoid a second straight loss in Washington to the Nationals. And Washington got off to a good start, already up 1-0. It's Anthony Rendon in the second inning. That's a solo home run, made it 2-0. Very next pitch, it's Matt Wieters taking John Lackey up and out. Solo home run, 3-0 Washington. Into the fifth now, time to add injury to insult for the Cubs. Wieters is up again. Pop fly to third base. Chris Bryant going to take his time here and make the catch, but he steps on the third base bag as he makes the catch, rolls his ankle, had to leave the game. X-rays are negative. Definitely out tomorrow. They'll see if they have to send him to the disabled list. Nationals, they get the win tonight over the Cubs. 8-4 is the final. Jeff, thanks. We continue to follow that explosion at Murray State University. My colleague Todd Faulkner is live on campus tonight. We're going to check back in with him. Todd. All right, so Jennifer, the big takeaway, if you're just joining us and through overnight into the morning hours, is this an explosion here at New Richmond Residence Hall earlier today. Two people injured, one treated on scene and went home. The other one uh, flown to Vanderbilt for additional treatment. What I just learned in the past few minutes is that right now we're not expecting any new information over the course of the evening. And the game plan is all the agencies will come together tomorrow morning to come up with a plan on how best to proceed. I'm going to step out and leave you tonight with a final look at the situation here at Murray State University where people felt shock and at times fear when an explosion happened, tearing an enormous hole in New Richmond Hall residence. And take a look at that as we say good night to you this evening. Again, be sure to check with us throughout the day tomorrow and, of course, online at WPSDLocal6.com. You can always find updates and newest information as we receive it on Twitter. For all of us at WPSD Local 6, have a good night.